When I built my last SAS um, grabber app, or my first SAS, I guess I've since released technically one or two, um, I kind of felt the pressure to use AWS. And that was because everybody in the industry was using AWS, so I should too. AWS was the standard and you need to follow the standard and you need to use the... I wasted a lot of money doing this. This was a really dumb idea, but more than money, I wasted a lot of time because AWS has five bajillion different services and they've got certificates just to figure out exactly what all of those services do. And you can spend your entire career doing just DevOps stuff on AWS or just infrastructure stuff on AWS. There, are, It's just an entire ecosystem of nonsense. But this video is not going to be about just dunking on AWS, though that's kind of where it all started for me. We're going to be talking about Vercel and why recently I've kind of switched over to Vercel for most of my projects. Vercel is admittedly a service built on top of AWS. At the end of the day, what you're really using is AWS's infrastructure. But Vercel has built a wrapper over it so good that you never actually have to deal with the AWS that's underneath the hood. And it's a lot cheaper as long as you're willing to kind of forget about a lot of the different features and fancy bells and whistles that AWS has. Now, I'm going to caveat that with saying you probably don't need those bells and whistles for most of your stuff. There's this joke that Prime and Theo and a lot of other dev YouTube folks make that folks will spend all of this time setting up this complex infrastructure for a personal landing page that's going to get five visitors a month. Right here, that's me. I did that quite a lot. Um, it's a trap that you can fall into very, very easily. But the point of the, the point of the joke or the meme is that there's no point in spending all of this time configuring AWS and doing load balancing and all that stuff for a SaaS that has not got any users yet. There's no point. There's no point at all. So let's talk a little bit about Vercel. Now, the reason why I like Vercel is that it takes a lot of the CI CD headaches away. We're looking here at the code for my newest SaaS application feature thing, um, Dev Cheats or Dev Cheat Sheets. Um, you can go to devcheatsheets.io or look at the video up in the corner to learn a little bit more about that. But essentially, it's going to be a social platform for developers to discover and share and riff on resources for developers. Um, so it's going to kind of be Twitter for developers, but like, good. That's the goal. Um, so we're going to use this as kind of an example because it's the code base that I had open at the time and I've got it all set up over on Vercel. I'll go ahead and show you the branch that we're at right now. We're just on main. Um, so this is just origin, origin main. The way Vercel is set up is that you've got a production branch, which is usually main or master, um, your main branch that you push to, and you've got all of your other kind of dev branches. Um, these dev branches you can set up to be staging or you can set up them to be like just feature branches um, and Vercel treats them all the same. That is that it creates deployments per each branch. Um, now I've heard that you can kind of get yourself in trouble here. If you're the type that likes to create a bajillion branches for each feature, then Vercel is going to get mad and start charging you money. But I have not run into that issue because I'm typically just using like one or two feature branches at a time and the main production branch. So if we go over to my Vercel, let's see if I can do that gracefully. There we go. If we go over to my Vercel dashboard and hopefully don't show anything sensitive. Don't think I will. Um, if we go to Dev Cheat Sheets right here, I've also got my personal site set up on Vercel. We've got our main deployment here. Um, that's going to be where the DNS is pointing. So this main deployment that you've got right here um, is the actual site itself. So if we go over to Dev Cheat Sheets.io, we can see it all in its glory and I've got it set up with Shipfast. That is another thing that I plan on doing a review on. Um, it's an awesome SaaS kind of starter template, um, but that's for another day. That is the production deployment, as you can see. I created that deployment four days ago. Um, that is my GitHub link. All of this works through Git, which is also awesome. 
Um, if we go over here to deployments, we can see all of the, the different deployments I've got. Um, so we've got redeployments, we've got um, a push to main, and then we've got our errors that I ran into trying to deploy this thing. Um, and then you can see a couple of the new branches. So we've got feet landing page. That's where I was kind of setting up the landing page. We can see our git, um, commit history. Um, you know, I was changing the TOS and getting a landing page ready and all that fun stuff. So we can kind of see a lot of information just within the dashboard, which is super nice. Um, now, if we go back over to VS Code, and I'm using that mainly because I want to create a video that actually gets views, and it seems like using VS Code is the only way to do that. Not going to say a word on that. Let me up the size a little bit so that folks can see it a little bit better since we're actually going to be dealing with the code now. Um, this seems too big, but it looks fine on the recording. Um, so let's just say we want to make a change. First things first, before we make any changes, I'm going to go ahead and create a new branch. So we're going to do git branch or git checkout, sorry, checkout dash b feet changing modal. And as you can guess, we are going to be changing the little modal that pops up. So let's go over to dev cheat sheets. This is the production deployment. We open up um, the get on the waitlist um, thing, a modal pops up, sign up for the dev cheat sheets waitlist. Um, that's where you can sign up to get notifications whenever I'm doing new stuff with dev cheat sheets. I'm going to be releasing a newsletter every week starting this week, which is exciting. Um, so let's just say we want to change this modal a little bit. Um, I'm going to add an exclamation mark here. Let's add two and then a one on accident, totally. Now we've got our one at the end. We've made a change. We've made a couple of different changes. Let's go ahead and exit this. And what we're gonna do is we're going to do git add, git commit, making some changes to the modal, git push. All right, so when I push this, what's going to happen is it's going to push obviously up to the branch on the you know remote so it's going to push up to github um, i've got it on a private repository so you won't actually be able to see this but it will push up what the hell was that oh, something broke um, it will push up to that remote branch and vercel has access to all of the branches on that repo so vercel is going to be watching those branches and every time i create a new branch and push up to a new branch it's going to create a new deployment and let me view that as a feature deployment. So we're going to do push, I'm going to get an error. There we go. All right, so we've created a new branch here. And if we go back to Vercel, we're going to see immediately, we've got this branch and it is building it. So if we go over to this deployment and we can view all of the logs and fun stuff like that, this is where it will show up if um, you're not able to build properly, which has happened to me lots of times over the last couple of weeks. Um, you're going to see that here. This is just exactly what you would see if you're running um, npm run build. Um, so that's basically what's happening here. It's giving me a lot of warnings because I don't write very good JavaScript. And then it is going to finish building everything here in a second. So that should be it right there. Yep, so we've got our build done, I think. No, I'm still building, trying to at least. Gotta love building JavaScript any kind of JavaScript. All right, so it looks like it ran, our status is ready. And what we'll notice, if we go back to Dev Cheat Sheets, refresh, oh, no, that's our local. If we go back to Dev Cheat Sheets, refresh, open up our modal, nothing has changed because this is our production deployment. If we go back over here, we can go to visit, and this is going to show us our feature, basically our feature deployment. So as we can see, this is on vercel.app. This right here is on devcheatsheets.io. So two very different domains. If we open up our modal here, we see our mistaken modal. Now, we could merge this into main, but we don't like it. We, it's, it's, ugly. it's something messed up with it. We've got a one, we've got a background gray that we don't like. And another thing, if you're working with a team, I'm a solo developer, but if you're working with a team and you've got one of these feature branches or these feature deployments, you can start creating notes here. So this seems wrong. And that will save that note. And if somebody else on my team were to open up this dev deployment, they could see it. They could say, oh, well, that does seem wrong. And they can go and change it within the code, um, which is super nice for teams, I would imagine. I haven't used it in a team-based setting quite yet, but it does seem very nice. Um, so 
Now, basically the workflow would be, okay, well, we don't like this. We're not going to merge it into main. Let's just go ahead and get checkout main. And we are going to do get branch dash D feet changing modal. And it gives us a warning saying that, you know, it has not been merged to anything, um, but it goes ahead and deletes it anyways. And that is basically the Vercel workflow in a nutshell. Um, the reason why I like it a lot is that I'm using Git already for, you know, managing my code base. This basically takes something that I'm already doing and build CI CD on top of that, which is so nice. I don't have to do any extra work for my CI CD. A lot of people have issues with Vercel, and I'm sure I'm going to run into problems. I may not be a Vercel fanboy for that much longer, but at least right now, the fact that I can build way faster because I don't have to wrestle with CI CD pipeline stuff, it is gorgeous. I'm not a paid Vercel shill. I think Next.js is okay, and I think Vercel is much better than what I was doing, but I'm not getting paid to say this stuff. I'm just honestly telling you, if you're kind of feeling the pressure of sticking with AWS, give Vercel a try. Just see if it's you know something that you can use. Leave a comment about your general experience with Vercel and let me know kind of your thoughts on it. Um, I'm still kind of exploring this area, so I'm very curious to see what more experienced developers have kind of witnessed with Vercel, but this at least has been my experience. It's been awesome so far. That's about it. Take it easy. Peace.